We have one final day before Season 6 drops on us, like Pinkie Pie out of a bucket of sponges. So many teasers have been dropped on us throughout the hiatus that it's time to have one last prediction editorial before our fanfics become obsolete. My name's The Bag of Vicodin, and here are five predictions for Season 6. Number 1. We will have references to Guardians of Harmony. Guardians of Harmony was confirmed around a month ago as a toy line with a corresponding comic series that intends to market towards the older boys. Much in the same vein as X-Men and Ninja Turtles toys, they are highly detailed pieces with weapons and movable limbs. As we get closer to the season premiere, we've had more media devoted and confirmed for this toy line. First, we thought the comics would be smaller and packaged with the toys, until one month later when trademark information for the series included entertainment services, namely an ongoing animated television series for children. While I have been skeptical of these toys in the past, it seems that Hasbro is way more devoted to this line if they are willing to create an entire new spin-off series. We've been mostly in the dark until February's Toy Fair, which means that Season 6 could have any amount of references towards this toy line. Will they give us a one-shot episode to prepare us for the idea, or merely have some object remain in the background for us to wonder about, like Star Swirl's book in Season 3? The amount of effort that it would take for the latter would be minimal, and even with enough warning, a darker one-shot episode in this fictional world wouldn't be too far-fetched with Slice of Life being canon. Which brings me to my next point. Number 2. More darker or sadder episodes. M.A. Larson and Natasha Levinger were recently confirmed to not be writing for Season 6. Both of these writers are known for episodes such as Pinky Apple Pie and Slice of Life, which were extremely happy and silly episodes. However, one of the remaining writers is Josh Haber, who already confirmed his finished Season 6 scripts. Haber, with episodes such as Bloom and Gloom and the excellent existential nightmare of the cutie remark, has the chance to outdo himself and make us once again jokingly ask if this show is still for little girls. The season 5 finale was a testament to how far the show could go with darker themes since Hasbro now trusts these writers with our beloved pastel horses. Remember that Hasbro signed off on every episode released, and that includes Haber's finale, where Equestria is a wasteland without the main six. While I don't think we're going to have another episode on that tone, I could easily see another that pulls on our heartstrings in the same way that Amending Fences did. As I said in a previous editorial, if you can't outdo the destruction of Equestria, then you can make your episode ideas simpler with a more down-to-earth character struggle. Or Haber can just make a new Nightmare World and focus that on Guardians of Harmony. There's a lot of room in Equestria for new areas of emotional turmoil. From family to a new sympathetic villain, I'm sure at least one episode will make us all shed liquid pride. Number 3. The season's theme will be family. Fluttershy's brother and a Mod Pie episode have already been confirmed for season 6. With Princess Cadence's child being born as well, it seems like this season is going to devote a few episodes to the theme of family. I'm excited for this, because the main six's family have not had any real problems put in the spotlight, if we exclude the Cutie Mark Crusaders. This season not only has a chance to show how each element of harmony has changed from season one, but bring up the intricacies that come with merely having a family. Is there a reason why Fluttershy's brother has been gone for so long? Does Fluttershy avoid her parents because she quit flight school and it's a sore spot for her mom and dad? Is Rainbow Dash's dad a widow? That last one was a joke, but I'm reminded of Tanks for the Memories, and Cindy Morrow's admittance that the episode was a way for her to write about death without actually showing Tank dying. Does the writing staff want to go a little bit deeper? Do they want to explore the heartbreak of parental divorce? A terrible step-parent? Will Fluttershy's brother be more shy or the complete opposite, much like the Pie family? There is certainly a demographic that would empathize with all of these tough emotional struggles. With careful writing, we could have another episode like Amending Fences just around the corner. Number 4. Another episode with a secondary character. Make New Friends But Keep Discord was the first focused episode on a secondary character, and it was hilarious. Discord stole the show as the reformed friend who was slowly losing his patience while contrasted with Treehugger, who seemed to have nothing but patience. The episode's success opens the door for another secondary character to enjoy the spotlight. Is it time to dust off Lauren Faust's big Macintosh episode idea? Or perhaps the spotlight shines onto Princess Celestia for her moment. I'm sure the comment section will light up with suggestions, which is indicative of how receptive we are to old characters being fleshed out a little more. There's endless amounts of potential for practically every kind of episode we could think of. If we want to continue with the family theme, I'm sure we could focus on Bon Bon or Lyra and their silly parents. What does Bon Bon's parents think about her being a secret agent? Do they know? What about Zakora? What's the lore behind the zebra race? Or even better, how about an Enemy of My Enemy episode? What if Twilight and the main six have to work together with Chrysalis to take down the new big bad that's plaguing the land? Will Chrysalis make her move to take down the elements, or work together and swear her invasion once her power is back? If we want more changeling lore that isn't focused on the comics, we could always track down that lone bug in Matilda's wedding and see what he's up to. And finally, number five, Starlight Glimmer will join the main six. It seems almost inevitable at this point, isn't it? 
Starlight Glimmer joins Sunset Shimmer, Moon Dancer, and Trixie as the Twilight Sparkle kind of clones that seem like secondary characters. Only this time, Starlight Glimmer is tagging along with the gang in the premiere. We've considered what Starlight Glimmer is going to be over the hiatus, but now it seems like she will be part of the crew. It makes sense since the elements have more of a hands-on approach to training Starlight Glimmer in the ways of friendship. Since the last time she tried to teach herself, she was led astray. Her magical talent is impressive, which I'd imagine still requires the element of magic's attention. I'm not expecting Starlight Glimmer to be the focus of many episodes, since she would quickly overstay her welcome. But it seems fitting that Twilight would take up a student in the same vein that Princess Celestia did. It's a testament to how much Twilight knows about friendship, since she learned how to quell three students who Princess Celestia couldn't teach. Princess Luna, Trixie, and Sunset Shimmer. Starlight Glimmer is merely another step in Princess Twilight's studies. Only time will tell if she is prepared for this. And that's all I have for this week. What do you guys think? There's a lot of new and exciting possibilities for this season, so I want to see the most interesting suggestions in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. A bag of Ikidin out.